so we have some 10 minutes i just want to discuss something so now you know how to uh, make the circuits for pipeline adcs let's briefly look at how we might uh, design and uh, you know budget things budget you know different parameters let us say i give you the effective number of bits for the pipeline from this i can find the signal to noise and distortion ratio and from the supply i'll find what is my signal power so from these two i can find what is the noise plus distortion and usually you don't want any distortion so you want to keep this almost equal to the noise power okay you don't want any distortion so this noise plus distortion you want to dominate you want it to be dominated by the noise now if i look at the noise i love quantization noise and what else i love thermal noise so you know this entire n we have to distribute it among these two guys so again we can make one of them dominant or the other now let us say i am looking at very low resolutions right and remember my thermal noise is all proportional to some kind of kt by c let us say i look at very low resolution what can i say about the c value required so i look at low resolution the noise value will be small or large low resolution so snr is slow noise value can be large for a larger noise value the capacitance value can be small so for many times for low resolution adcs you will find that the capacitance needed for meeting kt by c will be much smaller and sometimes smaller than the parasitic capacitor themselves so in this case we can actually keep the thermal noise smaller because you can use a slightly larger cap that will not hurt you so in this case it will be now when you come to high resolution for high resolution what can you say about the capacitor value it will be much higher so in that case you don't try to keep it smaller because if you want to keep the thermal noise smaller you have to increase the capacitance value which means the previous stage has to drive this large capacitor power consumption will increase so in this case it is usually dominated by this so let us say if you want an e knob of 14 bits for example i am saying it is not uncommon to have a case where you have an sq and r corresponding to 16 bits for a 16 bit what is the sq and r you will have 16 times 6 that's roughly 97 db right now if you want an e knob the effective sndr will be how much e knob of 14 bits sndr is 14 times 6 is 84 So, if you want a overall noise level corresponding to 84 dB, you budget it completely to thermal noise and keep the quantization noise much smaller. Okay. And let's quickly see what are the sources of thermal noise in pipeline. Just briefly look at it and finish it. So let me draw the pipeline case. Let's say this is stage one. This goes to M DAC. Let us say it has a gain G1. this goes to the say in that two this is adc cool now of course you will have thermal noise due to adcs and the mdacs so uh, what do you think will happen to the thermal noise added by the first adc let us say this is add is adding some noise n1 what will happen to this noise I mean, if I want to find how it appears at the output, how it appears at the output. This is P one, P two, P three. Huh? I mean, if I have a thermal noise, how can I model it in the ADC? I already have a quantization noise Q one. If I have an additional thermal noise, how can I model it? Plus n one. So I have the quantization noise from the first ADC. Ideally, what happens at the output? If I take the final output in the pipe and ADC, so any quantization noise added by the first stage is completely cancelled. So the thermal noise can also be thought of as getting added along with it. So that will also not come. Similarly, what can you say about the noise from the second stage? 
so if you look at the thermal noise the adc 1 to n minus 1 they will not cancel they will not you know uh, contribute and only the last stage adc will contribute and how will that appear at the final output let us say it's fine so basically the noise from the adc is very minimal so they will not add any noise literally so the major noise will come from the m dac so let us say this guy has an input referred noise of vn1 how will it appear at the output final output remember that this is getting added along with the input itself it is getting added along with the input so it directly appears what about the noise added by the second stage? When you refer it back to the input, it will get divided by the gain. So the overall noise in the pipeline ADC will just be the M dot noise, VN3 by G1, G2 and so on, that's all. And uh, if you look at the M dot circuit, where is, where is this? Have it. We have it here. Yeah, let me copy it quickly. This is the MDAC circuit we saw. So this MDAC is basically a switch capacitor amplifier. So you guys know how to find the calculate the noise here. As usual, you will have noise contributed in both phases phi 1, phi 2. So first you consider noise only in phi 1, see how it appears at the output and then you consider the noise sources in phi 2 how it appears at the output and sum them up, right. So in phi 1 each branch will sample a noise and what will be the variance of that noise? I mean each, I mean here I have switches, right, each switch will add noise and what will be the variance of the sample noise? Kt by this capacitor. So each switch capacitor branch will sample a noise with that variance and all of them will transfer that to the feedback capacitor. So you can work out what that is. Similarly in phase 2 you will have noise due to both switches and the OTA. We will ignore the switches. So the circuit basically reduces to this in phi 2. So you will have something and then you will have 4 capacitors in parallel. Yeah. So it becomes a simpler circuit. I will give it as an assignment to work out. You can find it. Yeah. So what you will find is, I mean this will give the total output noise. This, let's say the output. If I want to find the input referred noise, what do I do? No, no. This is the output. If I want to find what is the equivalent noise at the input, what do I do? Huh? I know the noise at the output, right? I want to find what is the equivalent noise added at the input side. Yeah, what is the relation? You know, right? What is this? What is the relation between input and output here? It is this gain, right? If I know what is the noise at the output, to find the equivalent noise at the input, what do I do? I'll divide it by this gain. So you can work it out. But finally, what you will find, everything is proportional to some k t by c, right? That's all. So even this pipeline noise, if you see. So we'll have only noise from the M DAX and it will scale like this. So you'll find that the overall noise is uh, Vn1 plus let us say Vn2 by G1, Vn3 by G1, G2 so on. And in each stage the noise is proportional to Kt by some Ck. If I write the total noise power then how will it look like? Just give me one second. Yeah, this will be proportional to what? I mean, I know the total Vn is this. I am finding the uh, mean square value Vn square. What will that be? Come on, let's finish it quickly and wrap it up. No, last two minutes. 
This is Vn. If I want to find the mean square value of Vn, what is that? I guess you note that uh, Vn square is proportional to kg by Vn. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. So now Vn square, if I were to write from here, what is this? The sum of all this Vn. Like Vn square plus, plus blah blah blah. So it will be proportional to? By G1 square. Kt, yeah. This will be Kt by C2 times G1 square. And so on, right? So now let us say you know the total noise for this entire thing. Now I need to decide how much noise is budgeted to each stage. So what what is one way in which I can do this? I know the total noise. That noise is contributed by n stages. What is one way in which I can budget the noise? No, no. See, I, let's say the sum of the entire thing is something. I want to find how much can each thing be. Uh, let's say the total noise power is some, you know, one micro volt square or something. And let's say I have four stages. So how can I partition the noise for each stage? What is one way? You can make it equal. If I let's see, that is one choice, right? If I make it equal, if the first stage capacitor is C one, what will be the second stage capacitor? C2 G1 square must be C1. So it will be next will be C2 by G2 square and so on. So in this case, if you say all the noise will be same, right? If I plot this right, stage number versus the noise, that is going to be same. But here the capacitance in the first stage is much larger compared to the other stages. So if I plot the power versus the number of stages, how will it look like? The first stage will take the maximum power and it will reduce. So this is one way in which I can do. What do you think is the other way? That is the other thing, right? I can make the power equal like this. So if I want to make the power equal, what should I do? How should I ch choose the capacitors? Huh? All, equal. All capacitors will be same. So it will be C1, 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 etc. In that case, if I look at the power, it's going to be same across stages. And what about noise? It will reduce. It will reduce. These are two extreme choices. And some guy worked out some, uh, under some approximate conditions, he worked out something and found a reasonably optimal choice lies somewhere in between these two. So, what do you think is that optimal number? No, no. One extreme is choose C1, C1 by G, G1 square and so on. Other extreme is to choose C1, 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 etc. What do you think is somewhere in between? Okay, you take C1 by G1. So it looks like uh, optimalist use it like this: C1, C1 by G1, C2 by G2, and so. I mean, this is not the exact optimum, but it's a reasonable choice. The exact optimal value, uh, optimal way in which you have to partition this, is heavily dependent on the particular design. But you can use this as a starting point. So let's stop it. Or maybe just one more minute. One, one last thing, right? So let us say I now I know what is the number of bits I want, right? Let us say I want to have a 14 bit. Now the one thing to decide is how many stages I will have. For example, I can realize this 14 bits as let us say an 8 bit front end here. And I'll use a gain of 2 power 7. And then I'll use a 7 bit stage here. Or I can have this 1.5 bit stage, right? I can have a gain of 2 everywhere. Let us say I have 10 of them, and then lastly I put some, you know, like 4 bit ADC. So I can make it as a uh, longer chain of low resolution ADCs or a shorter chain of high resolution ADCs. So what do you think will be? I mean, there is absolutely, I mean, there is no, uh, you know, like right choice. Everything will have its own pros and cons. So what do you think will be better in this? If I choose a shorter chain? Yes, master. Actually, okay, one thing is see, uh, lesser number of stages, lesser number of delay. I mean, remember that here it will have a latency, right? So here the latency will be uh, shorter, here latency will be longer. But here you see that I have a 8-bit front-end ADC. 
so the dac will be a 8 bit dac so you have to match all the capacitors and that might be tricky so matching might be a bit tricky here whereas here it might be simpler and also so here let us say i put matching as minus here let us say matching might be a li little bit simpler and also here if i use a smaller gain right see remember uh, i am realizing this gain using this guy c1 by c2 now if i look at the output time constant right let us say i have a load capacitor here whatever what will be the time constant here we will have some total capacitor at the output times what is the resistance is it 1 by gm or something if i apply some test voltage what will be the voltage that will come here beta and beta is what right so it's 1 by beta gm if i use a large gain right what will happen to c1 by c2 it will be large in that case what can you say about beta beta will be really small so if this reduces to keep the same time constant what should i do to gm increase. should increase so it means power will be higher so if you have a larger closed loop gain the power will be higher so here power might be a bit higher but here it might be slightly smaller <coughs> yeah, different pros and cons just work so i'll stop here sorry I exceeded a lot of